Welcome to the Census Academy Open Mapping Series. This is Module 1 of the OpenStreetMap Learning Path, creating your OpenStreetMap account and mastering the OpenStreetMap interface. In this module, you will create your OpenStreetMap account so you can start mapping on OpenStreetMap. You will also learn to navigate the key functions of the OpenStreetMap interface, including searching for places, moving around the map using the pan and zoom controls, finding help, and changing the looks of the map. With breaks for self-paced learning, it should take you about 15 to 25 minutes to complete this module. Part 1. Creating your OpenStreetMap account. Creating your OpenStreetMap account is the very first step in getting started with open mapping. Point your browser to OpenStreetMap.org. You'll find the Sign Up button in the upper right-hand corner. Go ahead and click this button. On the Sign Up page, enter your email address and choose a username and a password for your account. Once you've completed these steps, click the Sign Up button at the bottom of the page. Now check your email and click the link to accept the creation of your account. Congratulations! You've taken the first step to joining a worldwide community of citizen mappers. Part 2. The OpenStreetMap Interface To make the most of OpenStreetMap, get to know the interface and spend some time learning your way around. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, you'll find the OpenStreetMap logo and label, as well as the Edit, History, and Export buttons. Let's examine how each of these work. The OpenStreetMap label serves as a home button. Clicking it takes you back to your current map view. The Edit button calls the ID Editor, which we'll be using in Module 2 of this series. So let's set it aside from now and move to the History button. The History button will show recent changes to the map in the area you're viewing. To try this, zoom into a small area such as a city or town. Then, click the History button to reveal a map with boxes that show the contents of recent map edits. If you click on one of the boxes, you can examine the contents of the change set, which is useful for data quality monitoring. The Export button allows you to extract small amounts of data directly from the map. Try this by zooming into a small area, and click the Export button. By default, the tool exports everything in your map view. But if you click on Manually Select a Different Area, you can adjust your area of interest. Once you click Export, your file in OSM format will download to your computer. Again, bear in mind that this works best for small amounts of data. On the left-hand side of the OpenStreetMap page, just below the Edit, History, and Export tools, you'll see a search box and a blue arrow. The search box helps us find places on the map and the blue arrow is used for simple routing between two places. Let's take the search box first. The OpenStreetMap search box is linked to a gazetteer, which is a list of place names and their associated locations. OpenStreetMap uses the gazetteer to return a list of place names that match your request. Let's see how this works by typing in a place name. We'll type Fargo in this example, and then we'll click the Go button. The map will recenter on the first entry, and you'll also be presented with a list with all the entries with Fargo in their name. Now let's try routing between two places. Click on the blue arrow. You'll be presented with two boxes labeled From and To. Enter the name of your starting location in Box 1 and your ending location in Box 2, then hit Go. The map will highlight the route between the two places. Note that you can route for car, bicycle, or foot by selecting your method from the drop-down list. Pause the video here and use the search box to center the map on an area familiar to you. Then use the routing control to find directions between two nearby places. When you've finished, resume the video. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see additional controls used for adjusting your view of the map. The plus and minus buttons are the zoom controls used to zoom in and out of the map. To pan around the map, simply click the map and drag until your new area of interest is in view. Below the zoom tools is an arrow used to center the map at your location. Pause the video here to try each of these controls. When you've finished, resume. Below the zoom controls is another group of controls for layers, the map key, 
and for sharing links and images of your map. The Layers button allows you to change the look of the map using four predefined styles. In addition, there are three tick boxes you can check to display additional information useful for monitoring data quality. Clicking on the icon that looks like a small letter I will bring up the map key, which describes key map features. The Share button opens a panel from which you can share a link to your map, create a geo URI, or simply download an image of your map in several well-known image formats. Each of these panels can be dismissed by clicking the X in the upper right-hand corner. Pause the video here and try each of these controls. Resume once you've finished. Now let's look at the last two controls on the right side of the map. As mappers, we often add notes to the map to indicate areas where something is outdated, missing, or where field work is needed to verify the feature. The Map Notes button allows you to drop a marker at a location and describe what work is needed. Lastly, the Query Features button has a little question mark on it. It enables you to get a short description of any feature on the map and what features enclose it. Practice using these features, reviewing these instructions if necessary. Congratulations! You've set up your OpenStreetMap account and know your way around the OpenStreetMap interface. You're ready to proceed to Module 2, Editing and Tagging with the ID Editor.